Did you know that St. John Bosco managed to build an enormous church dedicated to Our Lady Help of Christians? Considering all he was up against, it's a miracle he pulled it off at all. And it's so beautiful too. Well, today's story is about how they blessed the cornerstone of that building and a grand ceremony, and how Father Barrera gave one of the best speeches I've ever heard in honor of St. John Bosco's oratory. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. The slideshow of pictures later on in this video are of the church that St. John Bosco built in turn as it stands today. In June and July of 1851, Don Bosco focused entirely on constructing his new Church of Our Lady Help of Christians, never stopping even for a moment. Thanks to the work continuing at full speed, the foundations of the church had risen to ground level. Don Bosco and the other clerics in charge of the oratories presented a petition to the Archbishop at the Curia asking permission to bless its foundation stone. On July 18th, Canon Celestine Fisore granted Don Bosco and another priest the permission and right to conduct that blessing according to the Roman ritual. The canon granted this permission in the name of Archbishop Luigi Franzoni, who was absent. The blessing date was set for July 20th. More than 600 boys of the oratory, many with trumpets, spread this news throughout the city. So that evening, a great crowd gathered at the site, a larger gathering than anyone had ever seen in those parts. Archbishop Franzoni, who loved Don Bosco and his work, would undoubtedly have blessed the stone himself. But alas, this intrepid prelate was living in exile in Lyon. So Canon Anthony Moreno, Bursar General, blessed the cornerstone in his stead. It was set in place by Commander Joseph Cota, who was a great friend of the poor and a distinguished benefactor of Don Bosco's works, and Mayor Bellone cemented the first limestone with his trowel. Father Barreira of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine was greatly moved by the sight of so many people who had flocked to the event. Supported by the significant number of Turin's priests, patricians, and matrons who crowded around him, Father Barreira mounted a small hill and improvised a spectacular speech. He began with the words, Gentle people, the stone that was blessed and placed in the foundation of this future church has two great meanings. First, it reminds us of the parable of the mustard seed through which many boys will come to seek refuge. Second, it signifies the work of the oratories based on the faith and charity of Jesus Christ. By their efforts, it will become an immovable boulder against which the enemies of religion and the spirits of darkness will struggle in vain. Father Barreira then explained each meaning so eloquently that the audience seemed to hang on his words in ecstasy. First, he compared the current times to a hurricane threatening cities and villages with devastation and ruin. He said, in that peril, we see frightened people seeking shelter, people retreating to their homes, the beasts of the field fleeing to their dens, the birds of the air flying to their nests, and they are lucky if they make it to a sturdy and safe tree. For us, the times are getting worse, especially for poor youth. This oratory is a tree that will put down deep roots and not collapse under the howling winds. In the shade of this tree and the enclosure of its sacred edifice, thousands of young people will find shelter and defense against the seeds of errors that are sown today by impious men and degenerate writers. They will find refuge and defense against the adages that destroy every idea of virtue and morality. They will find shelter and defense from the fiery thunderbolts of youthful passions which are aroused by the evil examples and scandals in every class of people. Already I see flocks of young men like terrified doves rising in flight from all sides. They're heading here to find a safe haven. Gathering here, they find shelter, defense, food, and temporal and eternal life nourishment. Gentle people, offer your material and moral support to ensure that this tree grows, spreads its branches over the whole city that gathers so many poor boys underneath it. To the disdain of religion and the decline of morals, these boys find themselves scampering through the streets and squares on feast days, in danger of dishonoring themselves, disgracing their families, and contributing to the disarray and desolation of civil society. 
O oh Lords, you could not employ your charity today in a more useful work for the church and the state. The life or death of families, kingdoms, and the world depends on our youth, whether well-educated or not. The good father concluded by turning to Jesus Christ and making such a beautiful prayer that it drew tears from many. O oh God, our Savior and our Lord, thou art symbolized in this cornerstone. Take this undertaking under thy omnipotent arm. Bless it if it is cursed. Defend it if it is attacked. Love it as the pupil of thine eye if it is hated. It fully deserves thy benevolence because its purpose is to gather, instruct, and educate children who are the joy of thy heart during thy mortal life. Children are and always will be the object of thy most loving attention because they are the little lambs of thy flock the choicest flowers in thy church's garden. May this undertaking forever prosper under thy protection. May its seeds scatter far and wide, carried by the winds of thy grace. May the very foundations of this world collapse before it fades away from the face of the earth. The words of this eloquent religious man had an admirable effect. They seemed divinely inspired and prophetic because they came and continue to come true. When night fell and the crowds left, Don Bosco remained with only the boarding students. Felix Revilio said that this was probably the most impressive project that Don Bosco would ever carry out in his lifetime. Don Bosco replied, Oh, this is nothing. There will be other buildings here and yonder and over there. The young men carefully noted his words and waited for the fulfillment of his predictions. However, the new construction was enough to increase the enthusiasm of the oratory's young people. Jewish boys often attended along with them. He welcomed the Jewish boys with joy. He entrusted one to Ascanio Savio for instruction, and the young man ended up being baptized. Many others would have converted willingly, but for the obstacle posed by their families. They attended public schools and were unavoidably exposed to religious instruction, which must have aroused their interest in Christianity. But their parents warned them to beware of Christians as enemies, against whom they were expected to maintain unrelenting hatred. And if any Jewish child showed a leaning toward Catholics, they immediately removed him from the school. If you'd like to hear about how St. John Bosco tried to convert a little Jewish boy that he met on the train, just click on the video I put on the screen. Thank you all so much for watching. God bless you and Our Lady keep you.